Let me ask you a very, very important question here. What's a genre of anime that we've seen over the past few years that has been getting more and more attention for less and less possible known reasons? A lot more than it probably deserves, to be honest here. That's right. You guys answered right. That's isekai. But what does this isekai have to do with all of the other ones in order to not be, let's say, lumped in with all these other subpar isekai animes out there that we've all seen so, so many of? Well, stick around and find out. <laughs> Over the past few years, we've had our fair share of isekai popping up and getting dragged to the ground, with the same storyline repeated. But my next life as a villainess is something fairly different than your average MMORPG realm, with a ridiculously overpowered main character so far. In my life as a villainess, we get to experience a girl by the in-game name of Katarina, who in her past life was a 17-year-old female otaku. Living out her life trying to find ways around the ending of the game, she remembers playing that, as the title suggests, all routes lead to doom. We start off this adaptation with the main character, Katarina, seeming like a rich, spoiled little girl who nags about the smallest things. It's seeming like we're gonna be following her story from childhood and onwards. After a few mishaps of climbing up trees and starting a garden, she gets memories of her past life, which in this case is the Otome game Fortune Lover, and all of the endings alongside it, none of which are good for the villainess. We follow along in the first and second episodes with her more or less making a fool of herself in front of nobility. From what she remembers about the game is that the prince named Giordo Stewart is supposed to get a happy ending with the main character yet to be seen. Katarina consults her self console in any event known by the game and comes up with ways to solve the issue at hand. My first impressions of this show is that it is clearly not your average isekai, other than the fact of being in another world. I'm fairly excited for the new episodes to come while I patiently wait each week for the new episode of Kaguya-sama Love is War, taking your average isekai that I'm sure a lot of you, including myself, have been getting really, really wary of, and putting a twist on it. The simple fact that it's based on an MMO game is what initially piqued my interest. Seeing an Otome game reincarnate seems far more intriguing to me now than all of those past shows. Knowing that that there's not an overpowered main character that acts like a pussy until he gets a harem full of girls, and sometimes guys. But yet seeing a female protagonist in the seemingly oversaturated subgenre has got me grasping for more each week so far. The overall thoughts on this with the fact with the fact this is one of the newer shows I haven't read the source material for is that I'm really glad we have been seemingly slowly but surely steering off the average isekai hype train and seeing more thought out, to an extent, material from this. It not only makes me excited for this season we're currently in, but also the seasons to come. In every sense of the word, you know as well as I do that the whole transferred to another world concept anymore is mediocre at best. This show gives us a fresh take on it because from my knowledge this is one of the very, very few adaptations where number one, it's a unique isekai, and number two, it involves a female protagonist. For first takes on this anime in particular, the comedy aspect is fairly high for being a kind of light-hearted slice of life rather than an action film. With episodes coming out every Saturday, it is predicted to have a total of 12 episodes in total, and we can expect it to end sometime in June of this year. The studio in question for this reverse harem-esque romantic comedy is the one and only Studio Silverlink. Having made anime such as Kokoro Connect, Strike the Blood, and Dusk Mania of Amnesia, I have pretty high hopes as well as expectations for this particular series. Not only has Silverlink had a pretty decent run-in for animation quality, but I know in shows like the previously mentioned Dusk Mania of Amnesia they cut out some pretty important source material from the original manga. Let's hope and pray to our waifu god Haruhi that that won't be the case in this series for all of the ones who have read the light novel of My Next Life as a Villainess.